All right. Hello, Didier. Craig Connect welcomes Didier Paris. And uh, we're going to be talking about everything from creativity to entrepreneurship to movement and uh, physical training. So, Didier, welcome. And give us a little background to who you are, where you're from, what you do, what makes you excited. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to talk about uh, what turns me on, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of my background, um, born in Granby, Quebec, uh, outside of Montreal, I grew up with my mom and a boyfriend in South Shores, Quebec City, um, and that's it, so I grew up there, started very young, uh, working uh, on my own, I had to learn from my my mom and her boyfriend, uh, that hard work is very important. Um, so I started to deliver newspapers when I was nine years old. And uh, until 18 years old, I took over the whole area where I used to grow up. You know, I started with one newspaper, the second one, and then I took over the whole area. The whole neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, every morning, um, I had to wake up at like 5, 5.30 a.m. and just deliver about the maybe two, three hundred uh, newspapers daily. So it was uh, hard work, you know, and uh, for the rest, that's it. Then I went to uh, study, well, I was in um, Spa Aritude, which is like uh, doing, like studying in the morning and afternoon doing ice hockey. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been really active and in sports my entire life, uh, playing soccer, baseball, hockey, and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I went to study art. Uh, my mother didn't want me to be a poor artist and eat peanut butter all my life. So basically, <laughs> she agreed that I would study art that was a program that was the mix of like art, but also uh, computer art, you know? And so I started to study that, but I was not really happy. I didn't feel uh, that it was fulfilling what I wanted to achieve as an artist. I always wanted to do abstract painting and everything that we were doing was completely the opposite. Okay. I started by technique inside of it, but um, yeah, I just decided to leave uh, and go to Montreal to study uh, show business high school. So I left the art world and went more into show business. I was already having my own sound system and doing the DJ since I was 13 years old. So I moved to Granby, where um, I'm born, and my dad lives, and he had a, a club at that time. So I went to do the DJ there, and uh, that's it. Then I moved to Montreal, study uh, uh, show business high school, and I became a manager for an entertainment company, a Jewish company in Montreal. Uh, so I started to do like all kinds of bar mitzvah and events and stuff, and corporate events. And uh, then that's it. Then I moved to Mexico and Central America um, for four years and a half. And then I came back uh, to Canada and then started the, the more serious art business. I started to paint um, because I met an artist that was called Francois Trasti. Uh, when I was working at the entertainment company, my boss bought one of his paintings and gave him a discount in exchange that I would go with a truck to move some paintings. So that's when I got to meet the artist and I started to talk with him and say like, wow, I really love your artworks. And this is really the type of art I always wanted to do, abstract paintings. Uh, but in school, they taught me everything else. So he gave me an appointment at 6.30 a.m. on St. Louis Street. And I went there and the sun was shining in the big windows of the studio. It was really amazing. And he put a piece of white canvas on the wall, told me, here's some white and black, choose three colors and just start painting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you're not going to teach me? He's <laughs> like, you can just get inspired by me painting. And he says, abstract art really comes from inside of you. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of just the self-expression of your feelings, emotions. Uh, with colors and shapes and texture. So that's it. So I started to paint with trolls and spatula and everything like him, uh, which I've never been a fan of brushes and to clean brushes in the oh. art. Because when I was oh, young, tell me about it. <laughs> it's so annoying. 
And that's it. From there, I started everything. I did my first painting in the studio, and I had to leave the painting there uh, to dry. And I was very eager to have the painting in my house to show it to my friends. And finally, it gave me the, the, the momentum, if I can say, to just take the decision and say, okay, you know what? Wow, it's really time for me to paint and express myself. So I went to the art store and I just started to buy lots of canvas and, and tubes of paint and invest into it. And that's it. I did my first painting. Actually, it took uh, 45 minutes for me to make my first painting in my house. I didn't even have an easel, nothing. I just put it against like, the side of a window on the floor and started to paint. And I will never forget that my girlfriend back in the days, um, she saw me like I was starting to paint, you know, and then she's like, oh, wow, it's nice. And she went to shower. And uh, about 15 minutes later, I was in the shower with her and she was like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm done. She looked at me, she's like, what do you mean you're done? I'm like, I finished the painting. She looks at me like, what do you mean you finished the painting? You just started, like, how is this possible? And she, when we talk about that, she told me that, she said, when you enter the shower, the look on your face, it was like someone else. You were like a child, like something in your expression, facial expression was, completely different. Hmm. The, <laughs> she got out of the shower, she saw the painting and she looked at me and she just said, you're a freak, like you're something out of the world, you know? And that's how everything started basically with the help of Francois and everything. And mm. I started to paint with a girlfriend of mine order, like a, my first like, special order. I sold the painting for a hundred bucks and it just went on and on like this. And until I filled up my house with paintings, and my friends were like, okay, it's time for you to go and like sell your painting and put like 10 paintings in my car, drove down St. Catherine Street in the downtown and just started to look for coffee places, restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that's where I found a restaurant called Piazzetta. I had a good connection with the owner in the village and we started to put some paintings there and we had good reactions from people. So he asked me to do that second restaurant on Saint Denis mm -hmm. and that was the beginning of kind of like bringing my art out to the world and uh, starting to show it and um, organizing like small coffee place like Evans Vernissage and then bigger Vernissage at Radio Canada with 25-30 paintings mm -hmm. then cool. a huge industrial loft that was empty and making another Vernissage inside with cameras filming my paintings and, mm -hmm little like video promotion yeah that's how it started um for me to enter into the art uh, world and express self-expression of my feelings through paint mm -hmm. yeah that was a nice story you were like left to explore from zero like you just his paint his canvas go <laughs> that's just exactly. like wow <laughs> it's so intimidating but it's such a great a great opportunity as well um so how did you uh, when did you realize you wanted to follow your creativity and how did it well you kind of asked, asked that question how did your journey in the art world start tell us are you uh, yeah well tell us about the story of when you went to the art fair when you uh that, yeah. that was a pretty bold story <laughs> really inspiring yeah so well basically um one day I did another exhibition and actually it was actually Francois Trottier who invited me to exhibit some of my paintings with him. Mm -hmm. It was in a place on Saint Laurent Street. They had like a big like winery, like a, like a cave with wines and stuff. And uh, it was actually the first time that I would do like an exhibition with like other artists, you know. So I brought a few paintings and a friend of my dad, old time friend of my dad was in town from New York. And my dad says, oh, come to see the exhibition of my, my, my son. And when he came, he really enjoyed my artworks. And he was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, you really have to do something. I really believe in your art. And I was like, okay, well, thank you very much. You know, kind of like shy and like appreciate the comment. But, you know, like I'm just, I was still doing this really out of just like, like self-therapy and just enjoying painting. No, I never thought that it would become a work or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so he told me, 
you really should really come to New York. You should come in the Jacob Javits Center. There's an art exhibition called the Art Expo New York. And you know, it's really happening there. It's full of artists and lots of galleries. You should, you should come and meet people. So I'm like, yeah, well, okay. So basically, um, he invited me. So he took two or three paintings and threw into his car and brought it like across the border with them and, mm. and uh, went to his house. And I, he booked me uh, the date, you know, I took the bus with two more paintings and I told the border that I was bringing this as a gift for a friend in the US. <laughs> yeah, I've done that as well. <laughs> and, well, you know, I didn't know what would happen, you know. So I went there and uh, he registered me as, a, I think he had like an art paper company back in the day. So he registered me as a, a buyer for like an art company. And basically I just dressed very well. I had like a nice portfolio in aluminum or metal, I don't remember, that was just open and I had like high quality images of some of my artwork. Mm. And uh, that's it. So I just went there and I entered the exhibition uh, with a buyer uh, card. And basically this exhibition uh, was open the three or four first days only for art galleries and art buyers. And after the last two days on the weekend, it was open for public. So basically I went there and I entered in the art fair. And the first place that I stopped was a stand of an art gallery from Amsterdam. And I see like all kinds of people and it's really moving. They're showing artworks like, like crazy. And like, it's really like, there's a lot of people around it. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious and I look at what kinds of paintings there is and I see the manager, you know, he see me and we look at each other and, and then he, he saw me and he kind of like, as I was walking to the side, he came to the side, he says, hi. So I'm like, hi, how are you? He's like, good, you're an artist, huh? So I'm like, yeah, how do you know? He's like, <laughs> you know, why do you have a buyer card? And I'm like, uh, you know, and, and he's like, uh, what, what are you looking for? I'm like, well, I'm looking to show my artwork and stuff. So he says, listen, I'm really busy. Come back at 4 p.m. I'm like, okay, good. So I just went, I walked the whole exhibition, made a lot of contacts, took business cards. And in the end, it, is, it was, this guy was the best uh, contact I would do in that art fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. So the day after he told me, uh, okay, like uh, there's only one problem. He says, I like what I see on on pictures, but I need to see your artwork in real. Mm. Said, okay, well, I have like four or five paintings in New York, so I can bring it to you. She says, okay, tomorrow in the entrance of the Jacob Javits Center, bring the paintings, the paintings, and I will go check them out. So in the end, I came the day after with the, the dad, my, the, you know, the friends of my dad, and we get there with the car, and I just go inside, and in the end, he was so busy that he saw, he sent, one of the sales guy to look at the painting and the sales guy went back to him and says yes i really like the artwork so he went he came outside and basically he brought the paintings inside and they sold everything in one day oh wow that's nice. how we started so from there he asked me if uh, i wanted to help them with the art fair because they needed some help for the last few days mm -hmm. so i said yeah okay i'm here so let's go you know so mm -hmm. we started to just slowly create a friendship and uh, he invited me to come to Amsterdam and to go paint there. So he gave me access to a studio with another artist and started the story of me traveling between Montreal and Amsterdam. And I would create paintings here, go to Amsterdam, paint in Amsterdam. And then mm -hmm. it's oil work that I do, very thick oil. And I don't use any medium to create the texture or to dry faster. So it was about four to six months to dry. Yeah, takes a month. I go to Amsterdam, paint there, come back. And when I would come back here, whatever was dry, it would do like oh, work. Take them back over. Mm. Sell it and then go back to Amsterdam. Whatever I painted in Amsterdam was more for Europe and Dubai. And whatever I sell yeah. was more for uh, the US. Unless we show pictures and someone really wants to buy the art piece, then we would just ship it uh, by, by plane or something. Mm. But mm. that's how for me mm -hmm. yeah well it was a, a good break you had there <laughs> you know, that's an example of being in the right place at the right time <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and again um, we did this interview yesterday we're still in work so it's funny to to do it again. 
But yeah. uh, basically, yeah, one of my biggest advice I can give to artists, because this is something I realized, I, I've been very lucky that I grew up with my parents that taught me like the hard work and money and I kind of have this business side, you know, because I used to do all these businesses since I was young, like newspaper delivery, mm -hmm. like removing snow, cutting grass and like all kinds of landscape and jobs. So I got the value of, of um, kind of like selling uh, my work and what I can do with my hands and get mm -hmm. some money for it. And uh, I got it very, very young. So I, I met a lot of people as I was young, you know, delivering newspapers. So I got really yeah. good at communication and talking, creating relationship with people. But as I grew up into the art world, I, very, I realized that it's not everybody that, that has this gift, you know, and that yeah. is feeling comfortable to mm -hmm. just show their paintings because it's, yeah. Let's be honest, it's, it's something that is personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yourself, your emotion, like in, on, on the paper or on a canvas and, and showing it to people like this is, this is me, this is a part of me, this is what I do and I create and this is who I am. So I really understood that Many artists will never sell one painting like Van Gogh, you know, never sold a painting in, in his entire life. And I think that, yeah, today we really need to, to teach artists, you know, that, that don't, don't be shy, you know, like put yourself out there and, and make contact because first of all, you never know who's going to buy your painting. And sometimes like we talked about it yesterday, but some of the painting you think are the, the worst artwork you, you've ever done might be the first painting you're going to sell. You mm, know, so exactly. it's about how you feel towards your artwork or how you think, how good you think this artwork is. It's more about being with the right artwork in front of the right person at the right moment that this mm. person process in his head wow i really love this painting is my budget okay right now am i ready to sacrifice this and not buy this don't go out for a month or two but really have this painting into my house and oh i really like this guy and, and also i think that to be there physically in the art tour in the art uh, fair or exhibition it also helped you to sell because people can meet the artists, you know, and, and we all love to meet artists. Like if, if I can meet one of my favorite singer, it would be an honor to meet someone that I appreciate the, the work, you know? So, yeah. but at the same time, it's, it can be good and not good because then you can also hear bad comments of people about mm -hmm. your artwork. So it's kind of like good and mm. not good. And uh, as we talked about it yesterday also, it's, I think that when you do art from your heart and your soul just out of passion it's something but the day that your art becomes your work yeah. it changes the dynamic a lot it changes the dynamic yeah yeah I think and, and start to be like you go back to your studio and you're like ah oh, oh but people didn't like those colors and this is sells good or maybe i should do this and then it's like mm -hmm. You don't just enter your studio and just create freely whatever you feel inside without any thought of what are people going to think. It's just you're doing it out of a therapy for yourself to feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. So from the point that you really start going to exhibitions and selling and really like it's becoming more and more, you know, you, you quit your nine to five job to do this full time. Mm -hmm. Then it brings another stress and it brings another reality that it takes a strong mind, I think, and, mm. and time and to really be able to, to cut, you know, to, to separate, okay, whatever happens outside of, of my creation, like space, should stay there. And whenever I enter in this space, you know what, I just need to express whatever I have inside and who cares if I don't sell artwork. Mm -hmm. Don't paint it just to please people and just, I understand, like I always say, I have three kinds of creation. I have creations that are purely emotional. 
that I feel like a sponge, you know, I go through my life and I just suck in and suck in experiences and feelings and, and mm -hmm. one enter in my studio and I just take the sponge and I just squeeze all these emotions and experiences out on a canvas, you know? Yeah. First type of creation. My second type of creation is a creation where I have a subject, I have an idea in mind, something a bit more precise, even if it's not completely precise, but I have something that is, is pushing me to, to, to create this painting. You know, it can be inspired of another artwork that I saw or something that I've seen or just some of my travel that I did because I just got back into my studio after a long time traveling. Yes. Yeah. That would be my second type of creation. And my third type of creation, I would call this the, uh, uh, I forgot. When you, when someone asks you like a- uh, uh, A commission? Special order. Special yes, order. commission or special order, yeah, exactly. That's it. So the special order would be, would be my third type of creation. And to me, I would say that the, the three types of creation are good. It's, it's like there's no one that I like more than another, you know? Like if someone would order a special order from me, first thing I would say is no deposit. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. I'm going to mm -hmm. sell it. And I'm going to deal with it. Second thing, there's no delivery date. So mm -hmm. don't press me, don't rush me. I'm going to do it. I, I feel it inside me and it's mm -hmm. really going to be best moment for me to do that creation and uh, yeah uh, like just give me inspiration so I tell people look at my artworks look at my paintings you know website whatever it is my book and and tell me three to five artwork that you really like and to each one of them you're going to tell me what you like you like the texture you like the movement like or whatever you see inside and and then like just guide me so I can see a little what do you like about my work and, and yeah do so you have like a, a starting point yeah give me a starting point and give me a frame to work around mm -hmm. and on that i will create something and and what will be will be if you like it you like it if you don't it's 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 too bad but someone else <laughs> yeah. Will like it. yeah it's hard <laughs> to guarantee in those situations <laughs> Yeah, and worst case scenario, one of my friends or family members will take it into their house. And <laughs> <they will finish. laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've worked in different roles during your time as an artist. Um, about in the gallery, what was the gallery you worked at, and how was that experience? Did it help you evolve as an artist working in a gallery? I would say it was a. In French, we say un couteau à deux tranchants, like a knife with, with blades on both sides. Uh, Double-edged sword, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really helped me in terms of understanding the art world, you know, to really understand that for different countries, there's different, um, like I understood why some galleries choose some artists for different art markets, because mm. in Dubai, you will sell a lot of blue and white and cold colors and shiny like gold and silver while if you go to other countries that are more cold like Canada or like you know something like that you will sell more like earth colors and fire orange and red you know mm. um, so I really it really helped me to understand more the markets of the art world also like I understood that French people are very very big into abstract that like expressionism like I do you know that's why if you look at the history of art, you know, all like Jean-Paul Aviopel, Bob Zua, and all those painters, really went to France to, to, um, to expand, if you want, their, uh, not their knowledge, but their career. Mm. And uh, also China is really big into abstract art. So mm. it, it's really helpful in terms of that, but at the same time, as I was saying, like, you know, to be in the exhibition as a salesman, you know, I would talk about myself in the third person when someone, I would introduce all the artists that we had in the art gallery. I would say, oh, this is uh, Gabriela from Mexico. This is Didier from Quebec. This is, and I would just go on. And I, I would not say that I'm the artist. Yeah. We would tell the people once they, they buy the painting and they pay for it, mm -hmm. then we 
if this is the artist. And if someone wants to really buy one of my paintings, I would just walk out and another salesperson would come mm -hmm. and finish sales because to me it was, it was making no sense that I'm trying to convince someone or to, mm -hmm. to push the sale that is, is my painting at the end of the day. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. I think it's good to know both sides. Like you say, um, as, as knowledge, just to know how that machine works, but to be able to get into your bubble, like you were saying, I think that the bubble, that creative space for an artist is sacred. It's a sacred space. And that's where the magic happens. And so you, you need to look after that space. It's, it's your heart, you know, that's where your heart makes the, like the creativity comes out and it has to be, it's, it's a really important place. That's where it all starts. So yeah, if you're thinking about, you know, all this, what people are thinking, or if you have to sell it or, or all sorts of those kinds of things, then it's going to affect that pure, the purity of that space. And inevitably at the end, it's going to have an effect on the final product and the final product that the people want to buy you. That's, that's why that, you know, that's why you're in the gallery that because it's you and it's, it's you they want that's, and it's you that is going to sell. So if that starts uh, deviating or getting uh, less authentic, it's, it's going to show. I mean, it's not to say that you can't change and you won't change because you do. And I think as you evolve as a person, your style will evolve accordingly. And, but it still has to be authentic to who you are. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting relationship. The business creation relationship. <laughs> yeah, I understand that not everybody, you know, it's not everyone that has this inside of them. And I think if there's one thing that I can tell people is um, I have a reputation for being someone who's uh, very self-taught and who's not afraid to, to try something new and I'm, I'm going to really put 200% into what I'm doing and, and I'm going to get it because yeah. even if Tell me, no, no, it's not possible. You can't do it. You can't achieve it. Well, look at me. I'm going to do it, you know? So mm -hmm. I would say, like, don't mind people. Believe in yourself and believe that you can achieve whatever you want. Even if it's something that you think you're, you're not good at, first start by just stop saying you're not good at it. Mm -hmm. All right? And just say, I'm a beginner. I'm learning. And, and start changing like the power of words, you know, words are very important. So choose wisely your words when you're talking to other people, but also when you're talking about yourself, you know, believe in yourself and everything is possible. Everything comes through hard work and practice. You know, people mm -hmm. say, oh yeah, but you're so lucky, you, you're so talented, but no, like, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe I'm a bit talented, but at the same time, whatever I did in my life, I worked hard for it. And it was not easy, you know, I hit some walls and, and like one of the greatest influence in my life is Paulo Coelho. And like I've been reading an interview of him and when I bought the book, The Alchemist, it was a special edition of the interview. And that interview, they were asking Paulo Coelho, what made you so famous? What like, you know, pushed you to, to become who you are and everything? And, and, and he says like, What's like, yeah, what's, the, what's your secret, you know? And he says, I think that the biggest secret is you have to fall seven times and rise up eight times. And most people will fall two, three times and they will not rise up again. But yeah. a big, big amount of people will fall down six or seven times and they will just give up when they just <laughs> have to rise up one more time. So once it, like, and I know what it is, I know how it feels to enter into an art gallery, to, to try to show your work and, and they don't care about you, you know, or I remember once I entered and this guy was talking about an artist that, yeah, you know, he's about to die, the value is going to go up. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, one day it's going to be me. They're going to talk about me like this. And, and I just wanted to walk out already of the place, you know, mm. or I entered yeah. a place that was kind of like, in the, the, the city where I, I am born 
It was like a small store, gift shop store, an art gallery. You know, already it's like not, you know, very like famous art gallery. And I enter in the store, there's nobody. And then this woman comes out behind the curtain. It's like, oh, sorry, she's full of paint. So you could see she's an artist, she's painting, she has her own shop. And I'm like, oh, my name is Didier. You know, I, I'm an artist and I wanted to see if we can work together. And I gave her my business card. And from the moment I told her I'm an artist, it's like she put that invisible scarf and she became very high end, like, uh, you know, and, and I, I with just with her, her energy and, and her word, I was shocked. Mm. So I, I said, I'm sorry. I took back the business card from <laughs> her hand. And I said, sorry, like, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how it is. You know, I, I know it's not easy to just enter in a place and put yourself naked and just go on. And the hardest is to open your mouth and say two, three words, and then that's it. You just have to to deal with whatever's going to happen, you know, but just do it. Yeah. I mean, you lose. Someone is going to say no to you. Okay. And, and so what? You just keep on going with your life and keep on doing what, what you love and, and, and believe in yourself no matter what, because at the end of the day, the only thing you care about is the people you love and the mm -hmm. people who love you will always love you for who you are. And if people yeah. that want to buy an artwork from you, it's because they want to buy you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm, so that's, I would say, I was, the next question was going to be, what, was the, what is the advice you'd give, three pieces of advice you'd give to artists with regards to art fairs, galleries, and promotion, that kind of thing. So I remember yesterday you said something, uh, how important it is for a, an artist to have a good business card. Yeah, Second, exactly. <laughs> and, and now with everything that is happening get a damn good website you know and yeah. today people like i personally use wix.com you know but there's so many platforms today that that you can easily build a website you know and it's easy and you can be independent you don't need a big budget you know like we're talking maybe 200 bucks a year or something like that you know with your domain and everything and and you can be independent, you know, upgrade it as much as you want, put more artwork, pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, the, the business card is, is the best, you know, because to me, I mean, back in the days, I don't know if today is gonna change now with everything that is happening. Let's hope not, but it's, it's just a business card is so easy to give, you know, it's always, good it's a good publicity it costs nothing and people can go check out your website they have your info and everything and, and even sometimes you can just show it to people they can just take a picture of it you still keep the business card and you give it to someone else and and, and that's it but now we're more into an era of technology and everything so i think it's really good to to invest into an instagram page and to to have a good website you know that is built and 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 build your social marketing. Yeah, yeah. First of all, just believe in yourself, you know, be true to yourself, stay true to yourself. And, and, and again, try to separate, you know, your creativity space and creative world with the rest of the outside world. You know, mm -hmm. we don't care what people think. We don't care, in the, you know, at the end of the day, just, just do whatever you love. And I think that then people can feel it into your artworks. Yeah, no, I think that's really good advice. I would say the same. <laughs> I really do. The, the best artwork that I have done is the stuff that comes from my heart and that I really believe in. I was not thinking about selling it when I made it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's go on to um, how did you get in the world of movement culture? How did you meet Ido Portal and what's all that about? <laughs> all right so um it was about a bit more than two years ago um, i was online on my computer and just you know watching videos on youtube about training and stuff and i see this guy on the side you know that pops out and i'm clicking on it and then i watch the first video of like five minutes and i'm like oh wow what is this you know that's interesting mm -hmm. okay a bit like animal flow, but it's not animal flow and it's something new. 
and I was really already I've been I've been like into bodybuilding and to yoga teacher and I was really into calisthenic you know after uh, mm. after bodybuilding and everything and and I realized already that already with the weight of your body and little uh, uh, not toys but uh, little how do you say um, like you don't need uh, to spend money. No, I don't need to spend money here. Yeah. Mm. French Canadian guy trying to take. <laughs> so yeah, you don't need much equipment, you know, to 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 stay in shape. And when I listened to the London Real uh, documentary about Ido Portal and his mentality, the way he explained things and everything, I was just like, wow, like this is so true I, it, it really resonates inside of me and so i just went to his website and i started to look if he had a workshop and boom there was a workshop like two months after um, in new york state so i decided to just try to attend one of his workshop there was still place paid for it right away at midnight on my computer the same night and that's it the rest is history you know i went to the workshop It was crazy. It was amazing. I learned so much stuff that still today I'm, I feel blessed with all of this because it really changed my physical existence, the way I see my physical existence. And I've been uh, growing up so quickly. You know, if I compare to like uh, the fitness world where you do reps and sets and yeah, you see muscle evolve, you know, and you become buff and sick and losing flexibility mm -hmm. and then I went into yoga where I really gained flexibility and I was really connecting with my breathing and I was more aware of my my postures and the way I stand the way I, I'm sitting and uh, I when I eat and when I and I'm on a computer and I do stuff you know I was really like oh, okay well my shoulders my back straight the way I put my head my chin you know and with Ido it was just next level And um, that's it. I had the opportunity to meet uh, my partner of MVMT Montreal, which is Lenny. Uh, we met in the workshop. Uh, the first day we didn't really speak. There was like 50 people there maybe. Mm. And on the second day, uh, I was with one guy and, and he's like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from Montreal. And then, you know, we trained together and we switched partners. And, He was with Lenny and he, he asked Lenny, oh, where are you from? And he's like, oh, I'm from Montreal. He's like, oh, DJ is also from Montreal. Like, DJ, who's DJ? He's like, oh, this guy. <laughs> and he's like, I was sure you were like Australian surfer with long, long hair and stuff, you know? So that's it. So he came to me and he's like, dude, you're from Montreal, huh? You speak French, huh? And we started to connect. And then we started to train together for the rest of the workshop. And that's it. It was right away an amazing connection. And we realized that, wow, we're, we're both Taurus. We have exactly like 10, 10 years difference. He was 25, I was 35. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were both from Montreal and we both bought this as a gift to ourselves from our like birthdays. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of things in common and that's it. I drove back after the workshop straight away to Montreal and We're like, dude, let's start this in Montreal. Let's bring the movement culture to Montreal. You know, let's create a community and a tribe. And that's it. We've been doing this now for two years. And uh, we're trying to, to help people to realize the importance of playing, the importance of making friends with, with the floor, you know, and to realize that the more healthy your spine is and the more you can isolate your spine and different parts of your body and the more you're aware, the better you're going to feel inside your body. Mm. But through play, this is the way that you're going to learn the most. So mm. our objective is really to see people in the parks, you know, playing games like, you know, and rolling on the floor, doing locomotion and floor work. Um, And yeah, change, like, instead of seeing people drinking beer and smoking and everything, you know, to kind of like bring this awareness that if we just play all together, we can first build a stronger community of people that connects together through movement as we stay healthy and 
we don't need to go to the gym where most of us, I mean, yeah, some people really like it. And I had my face where I was really into it, but at some point it's like too many people don't even know how to train in the gym. I always want to correct everybody. Not everybody in the gym will take your advice. If you even just go as friendly, you know, help them. And it's too much ego. Mm, so yeah. ego you know, it stinks ego in there. You know, people are so much into like their own like appearance and, and you know. It's very aesthetic. It's very yeah. uh, about the external appearance. And it, there's, there's, well, I, I would say there's probably a, some kind of inter, internal transformation that happens too. But I think that the work that you're, developing and uh how you're teaching it is is a lot more centered on creativity and connecting to your to yourself to your in like who the essence of who you are how you're expressing that and and then in the way that we practice those games like i've done some of your classes so a lot of it is in partners and just that in itself connecting with somebody through movement is is such a, a more fun and beautiful process to to learn in um, and you get feedback it's it's great you know yes and you also i mean the partner work is is, is really something that i enjoy also mm. in the movement culture because you know every day we go on facebook and instagram you know and all these social media platform and we look at videos we we learn from looking at other people. So with the partner game, we learn at looking at someone else's body, the way it moves and, and where it blocks and what's happening inside their body, you know? And we can understand a lot more and we connect also, mm -hmm. you know? It's like some people are lucky enough to have a partner that they go to the gym and they train together, but let's face it, most people don't have a partner that mm. they go to the gym to train with, you know? And mm. so to keep people connecting, you know, and like strangers, you know, especially, and, and, you know, one thing that I really enjoyed when we went to the movement camp, me and Lenny Thailand with Eagle Portal and his team, we were 160 or 170 people mm. from all over the world that come there to train together for a week. Mm. The first night we get there, you know, it's the first day you register, you get your kind of like your hotel room and then at night you go to have like, like the, the dinner, you know, and the kind of like the big buffet place and everything. And, mm -hmm. and in the morning after is the opening of the, of the workshop, the one week workshop. Mm -hmm. You go with this very Israeli military, like, you know, <laughs> you know it's it. it's like, you know, talking like hard and and giving shit to people like I've seen people last night eating alone. This is mm -hmm. something that we don't want to see here. This is movement culture. Mm -hmm. We are a tribe. We are a community. We don't want to see nobody for the next week eating alone at the table. Are we clear? You see wow. someone alone, you go either sit with that person or you force that person to come and sit at the table with you. There's no place. You make a place for that person. Someone can move, you work with that person until he or she gets to move. And just this was like, whoa, you know, and the way he say it, it's a bit scary, you know. <laughs> it's his way of being, you know, and, and not everybody gets that, and I understand. But the message is help each other. Mm -hmm. We're all brothers and sisters. We're here to grow each other, to help each other. And this is what I love about movement culture. You know, I get emotional talking about it. <laughs> but to me, this is the beauty of it. And this yeah. is what, you know, I mean, like we, we don't need to go like all deep into spirituality and yoga and everything, you know, to all connect and life is pink and beautiful. I know that life is made of, of hard times and good times and it's a balance of, of like evil and, and, and good and everything. You know, I, I understand all of this, but to me, it was such a, I mean, with the calisthenic world, you see people of calisthenic kind of like, you know, like being in the bubble and bonding, like, you know, mm -hmm. everybody bond around something, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, like, oh, you wear the same clothes as that me, like, oh my God, like we bond. Okay, oh, you listen to the same kind of music, we bond. But mm -hmm. 
why not with, with, with our physical health? Why yeah. can't body just realize that all you need to be part of the movement culture is a body, is a physical existence, which we all have as human beings. Mm. And the, it's just, there's no level. We're not here to judge you, you know? The only thing, as Ido says, is nobody can be better than you at being the best version of yourself. And that's all you should care about. And he also says, the day you are satisfied with your movement practice is the day you become a shitty practitioner. Mm. Because there's always involvement. And this is the same thing into your creativity. Mm, it's okay to be satisfied with what you're creating and of your creations and everything. It's good. It means you just finish something and you know you can already do better. Mm. And, and this is just part of life. So something that, that I really enjoy of, um, and I think this is a question, probably it's the next question you can ask me, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're up to what led you to open MVMT Montreal? Well, you told that story. That was a great story. Yeah. How, do you see, how do you see your creativity express itself as a mover? And you have had a very varied path through movement through fitness, bodybuilding, and how did you end up here? Well, we've been through that as well. Why is movement so important for people? Yeah, so there's one subject that, and it's funny because we're doing again the same interview as this. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like weird, but um, yeah, so basically there's one thing that we didn't talk about and it's the creativity of movement. Mm. I always love to dance. I always love to do sport and move. Um, but I can't really say that I really felt like I'm a dancer. You know, like I, when I look at professional dancers, I don't feel like I'm a dancer. You know, yes, I can move, I can dance, and I love Latin dance, and I love all kinds of expression with my body. I used to do break dance when I was younger, but I was not the best break dancer. There's always people that are better than us at what we do. And at some point, it's okay to look at them and you want to reach that level but at the same time don't forget to tap yourself on the back and say dude look at where you were you know look at a yeah. video of you, like moving like two years ago and look how messy it was and look what you're doing today look at what you achieved because this is the, the truth you know we're very hard on ourselves at least i'm very hard on myself and not very often we take time to stop and just appreciate all of what we did and what we have been achieving, you know? So this is also something I'm telling to all of you guys. Take time to appreciate what you did and to appreciate what you achieve and tap yourself in the back and be proud of yourself, you know? You don't need other people to be proud of you. You yeah. should be proud of yourself. You should love yourself. And one thing that I really really enjoyed of movement culture is what we call the locomotion mm -hmm. and the floor work which really helped me first the, the 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 floor work really has been teaching me how wonderful it is to get to an empty space you know that you're like wow i can move freely here you know i just want to sell everything in my house and have an empty house so i can move everywhere you know but so creating back a relationship with the floor because as Ido says the floor is as hard as your body so if your body is soft the floor is soft you're going to know how to roll on the floor in a very soft way and with the locomotion you're going to learn some movements you know some patterns and then you're going to learn how to do transition between two different patterns and then you're going to create what he calls in the movement culture uh, um, a closed system flow which is like three uh, movements or three patterns and more and you're just going to pass from one to another back, 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 with different transition and this is where it started to really build up a creativity of movement with your own body without calling yourself a dancer or whatever it is you know you don't need to put a label on it you're just moving you know and the quality of self-expression with my own body that I got to experience is again like one of the nicest thing 
for me in my life. I really feel free when I do this. I free my, my thoughts, my mind. I don't think. I just flow and I experience. And I put the GoPro, you know, our camera. I film myself. And, and then I look at what I did. And I, oh, shit. Like, I, I find a new transition between two movements that I didn't even think about, you know? My brain did that connection. Ooh, now I can practice this isolated. Mm -hmm. And then reintegrate it with other stuff and, and just evolve um, in my personal practice of movement. Mm -hmm. And this is really the creativity, the creative side of uh, movement culture that I really, really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's definitely something that's strong through your whole, your whole life. Creativity is expressed in so many different ways and just the passion that you put behind how you express your movement and your art and and everything that you you do in your life and you've chosen is is uh, expressed with such passion and the creativity is the the thread that that is running through everything um so it's it's really it's really great that um the movement culture really fits with creativity i find it's 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 so uh, there's so much scope to learn there's movement on the floor there's there's games there's movement on quadruped there's uh there's there's things hanging in the rings there's there's so many different variations to learn and um different ways of crawling and uh it's just a, a huge amount of language to learn and just the way that that you teach it is is really accessible like you'll start with the very simple movements and they're like the letters and then you know like you say you learn a few letters and then you put them together in as many different words as you can and then as you get more and more experience you can incorporate more words and make sentences of creative movement and it's it's such a, a beautiful thing to to learn it's so natural as well it's a uh, and sim and simple it's it's just like you say you don't need a lot of equipment um, so it's it's a really accessible thing and a very social thing to do as well. So yeah, yeah. You uh, can you know, like you move and then you do a transition and then oh we try something and monkey see monkey do. Okay, you start to move and I add the move behind your move and we just go mm. until we don't forget, like we can't remember anymore what was the twelve move that we just did or something you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like creative choreography. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in yeah. practice, everything, you know, from your coordination to your creativity to, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's everything. Mm. So we're on pretty much the last question now. What is, um, well, what are you doing now, like with, with MVMT Montreal? Um, you're taking it to another level. So you're, you're learning about um, have this marketing platform. Tell us, like, where are you, where are you headed now with, um, with your business and, like, the, the stage that you're at? You would have asked me this three months ago. It would have been maybe different from now. With everything that is happening in the world right now, I think that everybody is kind of, like, rethinking and remapping and rewiring, like, like, their thoughts and see like okay how am i going to evolve with what's coming and and the truth is it's we don't know what's going to happen you know we don't know what we will allow we don't know anything so um for sure like you know to to be working on my personal practice will always be first to be honest um, second to whoever is going to contact me, to whoever is going to come and it's going to be like, dude, like, I'm curious, I want to learn, like, it would be my pleasure to teach and uh, we're going to find a way, like, now at least in Montreal, finally the good weather is coming, so we're going to be able, hopefully, to, to, to do classes in the parks and everything. Um, hopefully, we can also, like, organize workshops and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so the plan is, for now, I would say, start back uh, outside classes, um, push more into like workshops and everything. And, um, you know, we have the online coaching also that uh, we want to push a little bit more. And now everything is turning towards the online. So 
it's not like we have much choices. Uh, but yeah, our objective is really to to grow the awareness and the community and the tribe in Montreal and to see, as I said earlier, a lot more people playing and exploring their physical existence instead of falling into drinking habits and smoking and everything. I mean, like, it's okay. I mean, I don't judge people who drink and smoke, you know, and this is your own choices, but at least if they can balance their own life with, with movement and awareness of the body. Um, and again, like one of my favorite sentence of Ido is more movement of the body and more stillness of the mind. So it's, it's not only movement, but it's also like stillness. Like this, I think is, is one of the, the inner work is the harder work to do. You know, it's, it's yeah, talent sit in silence with yourself and deal with your thoughts and the chatty mind. Like, you know, the mm. monkey just talk shit all the time. We all have it. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, I would say that that's the, the spirit. Mm -hmm. So taking, taking MVM Team Montreal to the parks and helping to bring a, a strong, build a strong community of movers in Montreal. Nice. And um, so last, one last question. What's the legacy that you want to leave behind when you leave this? What's the gift you want to give to this planet? You know, it's funny because my first tattoo that I did when I was 16 years old, I did it on my butt because I didn't <laughs> want to hear that it was something very personal, but it was just a, a sign that means infinity. Uh -huh. And that my, my biggest dream was always to, to leave a legacy, to leave something that is going to last uh, longer than my physical existence. You know, mm. so I believe that we, we, we do live more than once in, in different body and different time. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I really, yeah, I really hope to, to leave a, a trace of something and, and like my paintings, you know, I, I want to leave artworks and that hopefully will we'll get to people houses that would pass into generation or museum mm -hmm. or that I, I wish that my name will, will fall into a crack somewhere and will stay there. Um, but I would say change the world one person at a time. And this is the most powerful thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. and, and it starts with your daily actions. So I'm, I'm just trying to as much as possible influence uh, the people that, that know me and to, to try to set an example for people as uh, being someone that live fully with passion and, and no matter how, how hard it can be sometimes because shit gets in the way and you get hurt by people and I mean you know you have to stay strong and keep your head up high and Everything happens for a reason, and after the storm, the sun will shine. So I hope to be able to, to teach as many people one by one or in a small group as, as, as I can and be able to influence this world so we can leave for the next generation a better world and, and a world which is more aware of their physical existence, of important mm -hmm. healthy habits and keeping a a balanced uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's definitely a good legacy to leave behind. It's a, it, it's a good example to follow longevity and, and health, but it's also how do you, devi how do you define health, um, which is part of your démarche and your education. Um, so yeah. yeah well, right now, you know, with everything that is happening right now, like the first thing that I tell everybody right now is don't forget one thing. You know, people are like, oh, I need to boost my immune system and everything. But the first thing to protect your immune system is control your thoughts. Don't live in fear and don't get your thoughts take you into bad places. Mm -hmm. As I said yesterday, we all gonna die, no? So what's the point scare of dying? Mm -hmm. We all gonna die. So if it's not from this virus, it's going to be from something else. You can just cross the street and get hit by a car, the most stupid thing ever, you know? So just be aware. Live in the moment. Live in the now because that's all you have. And be aware of your actions and your words and, and do your best and live fully. 
like this, mm. you can go sleep at night. You don't have nothing to regret from what you did today. And you move on forward to the next day, the next day. And, mm -hmm. and you live your life like that, living in the now, you will have nothing to regret. If you do your best every day, you, you will do mistakes. And mistakes is part of, of life. And this is what helps you to grow the most. It's okay to do mistakes, but also you have to do an introspection of yourself and be able to look at yourself in the mirror, analyze, okay, what did I do good today? What did I do wrong? Okay, I have to learn from this. I have to learn from that. Grow up and, yeah. and, and make sure you don't repeat the same mistake. Yeah, exactly. And learn from those, uh, those opportunities and change what needs to be changed and go forwards in expansion. <laughs> yeah. And keep being creative. Keep yes. Moving. Keep being creative and keep moving. That's a good, a good uh, sentence to finish on. <laughs> With your inner child. That's the most important. Sorry, say that again? Stay connected with your inner child. Yeah, your inner child, exactly. Never yeah. stop playing. Cool. Great. Well, um, where can we get in touch with you? Um, where can we find out about MVMT Montreal? I'm going to put all of that information in the post. There's a little t shirt mm -hmm. so you guys can see, but this is MVMT Montreal. So you guys can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, go MVMT Montreal. Feel free to write us a private message or write comments, like, share, spread the word. And otherwise, you have my YouTube page, Didier Paré, that you can look also. Um, I have some uh, tutorial also about movement and uh, some videos that I post there. And you have my website, didierparis.com, with my artwork if you're curious to see what I'm doing. Uh, it's probably not up to date, to be honest, but still, there's, there's stuff there that you can mm. cool. get in touch. Great. So, well, I, I'm very excited to uh, get back in the park with you guys again in, uh, in the summer. It was really great last time, last summer, doing some, uh, some movement together and outside in, in the middle of nature. It makes such a difference rather than going inside all the time. So, <laughs> sorry? After the hard Canadian winter, it's going to be good to go back in the park. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'm going to wind it up. Thank you so much, Didier. It's always a pleasure to have conversations with you and uh, discuss creativity and movement and so on. So thank you so much for coming and uh, joining us. And uh, we'll be in touch and we'll move together very soon. <laughs> thank you very much for your opportunity and your time. And uh, yeah. we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. <laughs>